the spindle moulder is probably the most useful machine in the workshop. It is often underused, particularly when it forms part of a universal woodworker. In the past, the machine had a bad name, mainly due to the dangerous working practices that were employed, often as a result of inadequate training and a lack of safety awareness. Today, with modern tooling, the machine will achieve good results and carry out a variety of tasks with complete safety. In this video, I shall demonstrate the versatility of the spindle moulder and hopefully dispel many of the fears people have about this most useful machine. Now let's have a look at a typical spindle moulder. The machine consists of a flat table through which a vertical spindle is installed, usually 30 millimetres in diameter on most modern machines. There are rings to suit the varying sizes of cutter block employed. and spacers to vary the height. There is a rise and fall mechanism and some form of spindle lock. In this case a Tommy bar. Other machines have more sophisticated devices. Finally, some sort of securing device is provided. Some machines have two, sometimes three speeds. This Shepak spindle moulder has three speeds. The change being affected by this lever. The belt is lowered, the motor is locked, and the guide ensures that the belt runs true. In the case of machines fitted with a two-speed motor, regulations require that the switching shall be so arranged that the lowest speed always starts first. The switch should have a mushroom shaped top for ease of cutoff. The fences are adjustable for depth of cut. One or both being micro adjustable. The machine must be guarded to a standard that will meet the requirements of the current regulations. Now if a machine is used for more than six hours per week in a commercial situation, dust extraction should be fitted. But it does make sense to have this facility anyway. There is a large amount of tooling available for the spindle moulder. For general work, I personally prefer the Whitehill block. I've always found it easy to use and achieved good results. Others may prefer blocks with more built-in safety features. It's purely a matter of personal choice. Another very useful block is the rebating block with disposable carbide tip blades and scribing cutters for clean shoulders. A further useful addition to the spindle moulders kit is the wobble saw or groover. With these three blocks plus a selection of cutters the woodworker can carry out 95% of the work he needs to do on the spindle moulder. Other blocks that are available are very angle blocks for cutting at various angles, profile scribing sets for kitchen cabinet and similar doors, panel raising blocks, the Whitehill block having interchangeable blades, the combing set for forming the corners of boxes and finally a small circular saw is a very useful addition to the spindle moulders kit. Equipment that can be made in the workshop includes push sticks, spikes, timber springs, straight edges of varying kinds, push blocks and various other jigs. Their use will be explained as we proceed through the video. 
If you have a machine with metal fences, it's always a good idea to fit timber sub-fences. They can be the ply, MDF or hardwood. They're useful for fixing face boards. Now let's set the machine up to tackle a simple job. But the first thing one must do is isolate. Now first we shall set the cutter block onto the spindle. I'm using a Whitehill block here. The spindle, having been locked with a Tommy bar, the cutter block can be placed on at a convenient working height. The cutter is then inserted at least 20 millimetres into the block and locked firmly. A balancing cutter is placed in the opposite slot and again locked firmly. The square is checked and the cutter block is then removed and placed as near the bearing as possible. The rings are replaced. Before using any cutter block, always check the manufacturer's recommended running speed. In the case of this four inch block, it's 6,000 RPM. Add 6,000 revolutions per minute with a sharp cutter and only one cutter cutting, excellent results can be achieved. Now many spindles have T slots to fix accessories. If these slots are absent from your machine, an excellent substitute is a false table. To which accessories can be fitted. The cutter height is checked, the spindle locked off. That's okay. I always recommend the use of a false fence. It makes for safer working, and gives you a better quality job altogether. The next job is to break through the false fence. We check that the block runs freely and doesn't foul the back of the fence. Switch the isolator on. Release our fence screws. Machine on. I isolate using the isolator on the machine. The next thing we do is measure the depth of cut. Yes, that seems about right. Now, with the guard in position, we make a test cut. Well, that appears to be satisfactory. If there are any alterations to be made, now is the time to make them. Some people find the business of breaking through a little unnerving, but it's a practice well worth mastering. It's also a good idea to have a set starting drill. My cockpit drill is, check cutters are secure, check fences are locked, check rise and fall handles are locked, check block runs freely, guards in position and secure. All this takes only a few seconds and it is essential. One of the commonest jobs with the spindle moulder 
is the machining of straight lengths of material. Where fairly large sections are involved, the maker's guards are adequate. A very useful addition to the spindle moulder when long runs are envisaged is the auto feed. It reduces operator fatigue and makes for greater safety and gives a much smoother finish. Now, for machining short lengths or small sections of material, timber springs made in the workshop are extremely useful. The vertical springs are fitted with G cramps and the horizontal springs are slotted and secured to the false table with handles. The setup is extremely simple. and the spring holds the workpiece firmly to the cutter block. There is an additional guard here for enhanced safety. Right, now let's do the job. <laughs> We use a length of waste to push the last piece through. Now we can machine small components such as this newel cap using the same setup with one small alteration. We move the horizontal spring back and introduce a push block to guide the workpiece through. <laughs> One point with this type of job, always ensure that you machine the short grain side first to avoid breakout. Right now, the next job we're going to do is rebating. Now this can be carried out using any standard cutter block with straight knives. This has disadvantages however as one often gets breakout at the top edge of the rebate here. This can be overcome by using a purpose-made cutter block with scribing cutters that ensure a clean shoulder and disposable knives. Now the machine has been preset for rebating. The cutter block has been preset, a face board fitted and the maker's springs. For lateral pressure, a feather board is employed. So we carry out our cockpit drill, 
Fence is tight. Rise and fall spindle locked. Block runs free and guard in position. And we're ready to roll. That's a nice clean cut. The next job we're going to tackle is grooving. For long runs, the solid grooving saw is ideal. But for the average woodworker, the adjustable groover or wobble saw is the best bet. My advice is buy a good quality saw, preferably tungsten carbide tipped. Now the machine has been preset, a face board fitted, and the cockpit drill carried out. So all we need to do is lower the guard and do the job. Right now we formed the groove, so now we've got to make the tongue to fit it. The machine has been fitted with a rebating block and a special fence. The fence has a stout running strip along the bottom and because of this we need a false table to achieve the correct height. You'll notice that the block is now working over the top. This enables us by raising or lowering the block to achieve the correct thickness of the tongue. Check the thickness of tongue and use the rise and fall mechanism to make any necessary adjustments. Check the depth of tongue and use the fine adjuster on the fence to make lateral adjustments. As an additional precaution, I'm going to fit a couple of hold down springs. Lower the guard and we're ready to go. With this method, a good fit is rapidly and easily achieved. Now it's sometimes necessary to commence a cut other than at the end of the workpiece. This process is known as dropping on. Now when dropping on, it's always necessary to employ a backstop. This prevents the workpiece being kicked back by the revolving cutter. Now this is a stopping board. It can be made any length, and has both front and back stops. The machine has been preset, the cockpit dual has been done, so we lower the guard in position and make the cut. that seems a reasonable cut. Now if short pieces are to be machined, a suitable jig can be made. This is an extremely safe way of working. This is a typical example of a well-made jig. It has its own adjustable front and back stops 
and toggle clamps to hold the workpiece in position. Yes, that's a satisfactory cut. Now it's sometimes necessary to do jobs that may involve breakout at the corner. A typical example is the rebathing of the outside edge of a window sash. Now this problem can be easily overcome by the use of a swing stop. Right, now let's have a look at the swing stop in action. Now raised panels are normally machined with the cutter working over the top. This ensures that the part of the panel that enters the groove is of the correct thickness. If a sliding table is not available, then a suitable face board should be made together with a false table. Points to remember when panel raising are, always ensure that you have springs to hold the workpiece firmly to the table a suitable push block to guide the workpiece through and that the machine is fully guarded. Right, I've made my checks, done my cockpit drill, so we will machine the piece. And that's a nice cleanly machined panel. A couple of points about panel raising. Always start with a short grain cut. This means you finish on a long grain cut and it avoids breakout. Also, if you have a lower powered machine, take one or two or even three lighter cuts. Occasionally it's necessary to machine work that's partially completed. For example, this box. 
it has to be moulded round the top and then the lid cut open. We need a suitably shaped push block with a guarded side. The machine has been set with a false fence and the block has a moulding cutter. Cockpit drill has been carried out, so all that is needed to do the job. Note that we are machining the short grain side first. Cutting the box open is a simple operation on the spindle moulder. The machine has been fitted with a suitable saw blade and a false fence. I shall break through the false fence slightly more than the thickness of the box side. The machine has been checked, cockpit drill carried out, so I now do the job. nice clean cut. Now we'll do some shaped work. Now I don't recommend that anybody carries out shaped work until they're thoroughly familiar with their machine and can carry out the more straightforward tasks with confidence. When doing shaped work a jig or holder is necessary and this is an example of a well-made jig. Here is a further example. When making jigs they must be made strongly and well. A lash up won't do. There are two main ways of carrying out shape work on the spindle moulder using the ball bearing follower or the ring fence. And I will show you examples of both methods. Now, the combination of the ball bearing follower and a matching rebate block is excellent for cleaning up shapes prior to moulding, and this is the way to tackle the job. Now to machine the segments for a circular or semicircular frame, a suitable accurate template is made from 12 mm plywood. The segments are band sawn out two or three millimeters over size. Note the way that they are laid out on the board to minimize short grain. Note that the template is made slightly over size the template is secured to the workpiece with a couple of pins. Notice that I'm pinning through the waste portion. The whole assembly is then mounted in the jig. The bearing and block have been fitted and adjusted to the correct working height. A suitable lead-in piece is installed 
This prevents kickback at the beginning of the cut. And now we're ready to make the cut. Before you start the machine, carry out the safety checks. Remember your cockpit drill. The jig is suitable for machining both convex and concave shapes. Another use for the roller guide in combination with the panel raising block is to form fielded cuts on shaped panels. The straight cuts can be made with the fences in the way I previously demonstrated. Now the ring fence. This is an eccentric ring that can be fitted above or below the cutter block. The cutting point is at its narrowest part. To machine a moulding on the segment that I have just sized, the procedure is as follows. First install the cutter block and cutters. For convenience, the block has been preset. The ring fence has been set at the correct height. The cutter block fitted with the appropriate cutter. Now an important point in ring fence work is always start well clear of the revolving cutter to avoid initial kick. Now another simple method of shaping is known as straight fence shaping. For this a template must be prepared slightly smaller than the size of the workpiece or say about two or three millimetres. The machine is set up initially with a rebating block, a centre line is marked on the face board exactly in line with the centre line of the spindle and the board is set flush with the perimeter of the cutter block. The template is tacked to the workpiece. The machine has been checked, so the guard should be put in place. We're ready to roll.
Now I'm going to show you some jobs that may be of interest to many woodworkers. The tooling is expensive, but it's viable if reasonable runs are envisaged. First of all, box combing, or corner locking as it's sometimes called. The cutters are set in position on the spindle and staggered, and equal spacers are inserted in between. We have a face board fitted, and we need to break through and check the depth. We need a special holder, a suitable push block is made, and the workpiece is cramped in position. Right, now we're ready to break through. Right, cockpit drill done, guard in position, and we can do the job. Another job that frequently occurs is the jointing of cabinet doors. This is known as profile scribing. The joint is formed in two parts. The scribe is formed first, followed by the profile. This is a suitable cutter block for forming this joint. Now a sliding table is very useful for this work, but failing that, a suitable push block can be made. The material is prepared to net length, allowance having been made for the joint, and the end grain cut is formed first. Now I've adjusted the cutter to the correct cutting height, fitted a face board, and broken through to give the correct cutting depth. So we're now ready to do the joint. cutter is reversed and set to form the profile. All the pieces can then be moulded. In this sequence, the springs have been omitted to show the cut. This is a safe method. Top spring on, front spring on, guard in place and go.
Using modern adhesives, this type of joint is extremely strong. Right, now finally we're going to do some tenoning. Now to tenon successfully on a spindle moulder, a sliding table is necessary. As is also a pair of special cutter blocks of large diameter. Now because of their large diameter, the maker's recommended speed must not be exceeded. In this case, 4,800 RPM. A spelch block is fitted at the back of the fence to prevent breakout when the tenon is formed. Now, I've carried out the safety checks and the cockpit drill. It merely remains for me to put a guard in place. The timber is locked and we're ready to roll. Just a tip when tenoning, when doing long runs or repetition work, always work against a stop from shoulder to shoulder. Spindle moulding is a wide ranging subject and this video touches only the basic principles. Anyone contemplating doing more advanced work should make a study of the wider aspects of the craft. In the meantime, take no chances and let safety be your watchword. Mm -hmm.